Hey everyone, I'm AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for this first episode of I Create Content. I want to thank you for tuning in today. You may have noticed that the title has changed, but trust me, the content is only going to get better in this podcast. In the past, I've done Photoshop and Lightroom tutorial videos for you. I'm expanding the software set. You're going to see InDesign, After Effects, Illustrator, Flash, Dreamweaver. I might even show you how to change the oil in your car. The other big news is that we're moving to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday format. That means even more video content for you each week. Now, if you tuned in last week, you saw my frame border tutorial inside of Photoshop. Before I jump into today's tutorial, I want a quick announcement. On newsstands right now is Photoshop User Magazine, the June issue. Go out and grab it because on page 102, I've written the Lightroom featured article. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's a pleasure working with the folks at Kelby Media. So let's jump into today's tutorial, Lightroom. So what I have for you for today is some quick keyboard shortcuts navigating in Lightroom. So we'll start off with the tab key. Pressing the tab key is going to drop the side panels, but if you do shift and tab, this will drop all the panels. But notice at the bottom of the screen, I still have the toolbar. So you press T to get rid of the toolbar. Shift and tab T for the toolbar to bring it all back. But I know what you're thinking, maybe I just want to make some of the panels go away. So you can actually make some of the panels disappear by using your function keys. F5 gets rid of the title bar. F6 drops the film strip. F7 will drop the left sidebar. F8 drops the right sidebar. This means I can create a custom configuration that's going to work best for me inside the develop module, the library module, and any of the output modules. If I bring up back all the panels, I want you to see that if I drop the side panels, my plus and minus keys will quickly change the size of the thumbnails inside the grid view. Speaking of the grid view, it's simply G for grid. If you want to view multiple images, you can press N for the survey mode. Why N? Because nobody really likes to take a survey. So when I'm in the survey mode, you can see and then I can quickly X out images that I don't want to see and the screen resizes with all the images that are left. If I end up with two images, I can quickly go to the compare view by pressing C for compare. In the compare view, you would use your arrow keys to cycle through the images that you want to choose. Now the leftmost image is going to be your select the one that is the champion, your favorite image of the bunch so far. The right side image is actually going to be your candidate or the challenger. Once you come across an image that you like better, you can actually promote by clicking on the toolbar down at the bottom. So once I make that select, it switches things. Once again, I can use my arrow keys. Now it's worth noting, don't use your mouse to click in the film strip, you'll actually be changing the select images, not the candidate. So once I have my select, I can go to E, which is the loop view, or I can press G and get back to the grid. Let me bring up the side panels. I have some other shortcuts for you. And one of those relates to hey, our scrollable panels. Notice that I can open up publish services, my collections, my folder list, and then my catalog, and I quickly have a long list to scroll through. You can put your side panels in solo mode by option or alt clicking. So I'd option click on a Mac, I'd alt click on a PC. This now puts the panel in solo mode. And this simply means it'll open up one section of the panel at a time. So that's really useful when you have a lot of images or when you have a lot of panels to navigate through. Let's talk about some quick keyboard shortcuts for selecting images. So if I have a bunch of images and I want to go through and select them, really the most optimal way to do that is with pick flags. So it's P for pick, X for rejected photo, and U for unflag. If we see that in practice, I'll go to the loop view, select an image, and it's P to pick it. 
Notice it's flagged as a pick. I'll go here and do X. It's flagged as rejected. I'll go ahead and do U to remove a flag, X to reject it. I can go through, do a bunch of picks. If we take a look at our grid view, you can see that easily P for pick puts a pick flag in the corner. Hey, X for reject puts a black flag in the corner. If I simply hit U, that lets me unflag a photo and change my mind. Now, what if you don't want to use the flag? Some people like to use stars. We can do one through five on the keyboard for one through five stars. So I'll go and zoom in and you can see this would be one, two, three, four, five stars. Zero on the keyboard will take all the stars away. But what about colors? Some people want colors inside of Lightroom. I can select a series of images and now we've got colors. Six brings up the color red and you can see all the images are marked in red. If I select a series of images, seven is going to make them yellow. If I select another series, or excuse me, seven is green. Eight, well actually eight is green. I'm colorblind today. Eight is green and of course last but not least eight or nine is blue. That's what happens on the podcast. Sometimes I need to stop and take a breath. So you can see you have a lot of keyboard shortcuts here. That's a quick overview, but the mother of all shortcuts, you can't remember all these. What do you do when you want to remember all the shortcuts? I'll leave you with this final tip. It is command slash, which would be control slash on the PC. This shows you your library shortcut list. So once again, I'm AJ Wood. Thank you for joining me. This is the first episode in I Create Content. It's only going to get better. We'll have more tutorials. Appreciate it. I'll see you soon.